Hi, what do you think about this Eurorack setup? See something fishy? Well, more than half the modules here aren't really here. If you've been watching this channel, you've seen me go down the slippery slope of modular. But if you ask me what's the one must-have Eurorack module, it's none of what I've used so far. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen this on any must-have lists, but I think that ever since VC VRAC came out, the must-have lists need to change. Because it turns out combining virtual and hardware modules is actually quite simple. You see, modular can be very challenging if you don't have endless amounts of money to spend. So in my opinion, ever since the launch of VC VRAC and the explosion of the virtual modules that came with it, as well as a few interesting SoftTube modules, the one must-have module for your Eurorack setup is the one that will let you enhance it or try out new modules by bridging between the modules you have and need in hardware form and the virtual modules you might want to try out um, or may not want to purchase or can't afford in hardware form. In this video, I'll review two options for the integration of virtual and hardware Eurorack. One is the ES8 by Expert Sleepers and another is the 8A interface by Motu. I think these two are the best ones you can pick from and I'll talk about the pros and cons of each one and what to look for in terms of features if you want to try a different interface. Before I talk about them, let's check them out in action with a few sample use cases. I'll just clear up my virtual rack. Um, and by the way, you can, of course, choose either interface. You don't need both of them. So let's start with something simple just to show how this works. Uh, first thing I need to add is um, an audio interface and I'll choose the ES8 to start with. Then I'll take a module which in hardware form costs a lot of money. And here, since we have a screen, we don't necessarily need to buy one, a scope. And I'll take input number one from ES8 and drag it to the scope. Now we're not seeing anything yet because I haven't connected anything in the hardware. So here I'll take the output of say VCO2 plug that into input one and you can already see the result. And as I change the frequency of oscillator two, you can see it reflected on the scope. Now, the reason you can't hear this is because I haven't uh, connected any output. Let's add another interface. Something really nice, by the way, about VCVs that you can add multiple audio interfaces. And here I'll add the Motu interface um, and I have uh, outputs one and two connected to the microphone here. So let's just do that. Let's um, add a mult. Let's go here. Connect this here, this guy to here, and the output to here. And we have it. We can actually make this stereo if we want. And now these two modules have basically become an integral part of this setup. You can see as I play with VCO2 frequency and shape on the Mini Brute 2S, it's immediately reflected on the scope. Fairly straightforward. Now let's try and build something more complex. So what I'm going to try and do now is build an air harp. Um, I'm going to take this theremin, which I have no idea how to play accurately, move it through a quantizer to help me hit the right notes, and then create a virtual rings, then apply a real world effect to it, and let's see how that works. So first thing I wanna do is get CV from my theremin into my virtual rack so that I can process it. And that's as easy as taking a cable from the real world and plugging it into the virtual. Great, you can see now that as I move my hand towards the theremin, the voltage indication on the ES8 is changing from blue to red. So my hand is affecting voltage going into the ES8. You can also see this affecting the scope. Now I want my audio to come out through rings. So I'll go to here and put a resonator out. Let's feed that to the stereo outputs. Now, since modules are free, I also want this to be rhythmic and uh, JW has a great clock. So let's try that. And then take the gate out and apply it here. 
Uh, if you don't like this sound, I can always change it. Let's go with this. This is okay. Now I can go ahead and connect my voltage out to here. And now the theremin is directly controlling the pitch of the resonator. But it's not very musical. Remember, I can't play theremin. Luckily, a third-party developer called Amalgamated Harmonics developed the scale quantizer. And if we filter my bad theremin playing through it, now let's choose a scale, let's say this one, take the Volk Proctive out, drag it into here. Hopefully my new instrument is ready to be played. So that range is a little bit too much for me, but that's easy to fix. I'm going to put a VCA in the path that will give me a bit more control. Luckily, VCAs are free here too. And now, theremin players of the world, beware. There's a new player in town. Now, this module is actually one of my favorite modules. Um, I'll do a full review about it later on, but let's try and pass the audio back into it and then back um, into your ears. Let's see how that works. So I'm gonna map the um, outputs from rings back to, let's say, outputs uh, uh, one and two here. And we, we temporarily won't hear any audio. And let's go from one and two to the inputs of the ZDSP. And the fact that VCV exists doesn't mean there isn't a place for hardware modules, obviously. Uh, the ZDSP is a great example of that. It's got fantastic reverb and a bunch of other things that you, that you just currently can't do in software. Uh, like I said, I'll cover that in uh, a future review coming soon. So uh, hit subscribe and the notification bell if you wanna see that. But for now, let's stick to this and I'm feeding the two stereo outputs of the ZDSP into inputs three and four on the ES8, which I now need to map to your ears. And do you see what we've done here? We're doing multiple round trips between virtual and modular and, and virtual and modular back again. And I think that going back and forth like this is very exciting. Okay. So up until now, I've been using the ES8 from Expert Sleepers as the main Eurorack input and output device. And the Motu interface was really just our audio out. But um, the Motu interface has some special characteristics which make it also a potential candidate for Eurorack integration. Now the Motu's inputs and outputs are in the back, but I kept it this way so we can use the display as a learning tool. And what I'm doing is I'm running cables from the back and these cables are dot coded. So this is input number two, this is input number four, and I'll use input number two to send uh, synth audio. And you can see already here on the interface, the indication that sound is coming in from the Mini Brute 2. Now, just to make things a bit more interesting, I'll be using SoftTube um, as my virtual modular, not VCV rack. I'll take an input um, and map it to the Corgasmatron filter and then route the audio back so you can hear it. Now, there are a few pros and cons to using VCV rack versus SoftTube, but one of the things that SoftTube has uh, an advantage with is exclusive module emulations like this Corgasmatron from IntelliGel. Now, this is a dual filter, so I'll take this, plug it into the malt, and take one output, put it in here, take this output, put it in here. So the goal here isn't to demo the Corgasmatron, but rather to show you an example of how you can take a Eurorack unit that costs a lot of money, and there's a, d a free demo of this. You can download a, I think, 20-day free trial of SoftTube and all of their modules, and really see if this is right for you. And if it isn't, then you didn't waste money on a module. Um, if you, you're okay with having it in software form, by the soft tube uh, module and if you need it in hardware because you want the physical access and knobs and cables and so on then buy the real thing 
And the nice thing is that you can check out not only how it behaves in software, but also how it integrates with your hardware. Let's take, for example, the uh, Spectral Multiband Resonator from 4MS. How would this behave if I were to modulate it from my hardware? Let's modulate it with the LFO from the uh, mini root. So now my hardware is sending an LFO into the Motu 8A interface. And this is a great way to get acquainted with a module at very low or minimal cost. Another use case I want to show you is just using a regular VST effect. Now, you won't be able to easily modulate this with your hardware, um, but as long as you've got a hardware slash virtual integration, you can use basically any effect that's available to you on your computer. This one is Flare from Native Instruments Mod Pack. Another worthy piece of software is Silentway from Expert Sleepers, which is a pack of plugins that you can use within your DAW, completely unrelated to their hardware, by the way. So any DC coupled audio interface will work. And there are a lot of tools there um, for manipulating and controlling CV from your computer into your rack including if you insist the ability to use AC coupled devices for modular control, which brings us to Bitwig, last piece of software, I promise, but it is certainly noteworthy because of the effort they put to support modular device integration. Okay, let's take a closer look at our interfacing options. The first one is the Expert Sleepers ES8. The ES8 has four uh, inputs, DC coupled, eight outputs, uh, also, obviously, DC coupled, fully uh, normalized to Eurorack. The interface is USB 2.0, and it has optical ADAT input and outputs. It has expansion headers in the back that let you add eight more inputs and outputs using units sold separately. One of the coolest and most useful features is the fact that the jacks light up to reflect the voltage that's running through them. They cycle all the way from blue to red. The ES8 is only 8 HP wide, so it won't take up too much space. All this makes the ES8 the best way that I know to pair physical Eurorack with VCV or any other virtual instrument. So with that said, why would you need to look at an audio interface? Well, there are some disadvantages and some advantages to using an audio interface. The main disadvantage is that most audio interfaces weren't designed to be used with Eurorack. That means a few things. First, none of the interfaces that I know have DC coupled inputs. That means they'll pass audio and high frequency oscillators to your Eurorack, but will block static CV like note information or very slow LFOs. They might also output low line levels, which means you may need to apply gain to get to Eurorack levels. Finally, many audio interfaces don't have DC coupled outputs either. And that's where this and many other mode to interfaces come in. They uh, all have DC coupled outputs and their output level is sufficient for most uses. And you can tell by the inputs on the ES8 that the outputs from the 8A are definitely making an impact. The screen on the Modu interfaces shows really nicely which outputs are sending information. I'm sending trigger information here um, and an LFO to this input. You can also see on the input side, information coming from the ES8 is registering on the display nicely. So AC coupling works, but not for all types of Eurorack data. On the back, the 8A has eight analog inputs, eight analog outputs. A USB 3, AVB Ethernet for expandability and Thunderbolt, ADAT optical outs and ins, and of course power. The 8A costs about $800, so it's not cheap. If AVB or USB 3.0 aren't important to you, there are cheaper options. Since the jacks here are quarter inch type, you need some sort of adapter or cable like this to hook up to Eurorack. So since the DC coupled audio interface option is the more expensive one, why would you choose to do it? Well, there may be some features in the audio interface that are more important to you than having DC coupled inputs. For example, the Motu MK4 has microphone inputs and it also has eight DC coupled outputs. It doesn't have AVB or USB 3, but if you don't plan to expand it a lot, this should be enough and it costs less than the 8A. 
Another advantage that the Mode 2 interfaces and a few other high-end DC couple devices have is an onboard DSP. Eurorack typically doesn't have a lot of EQ or compression modules, and what this lets you do is take every output and apply different EQ, compression, filtering, uh, and even effects like reverb. So there's a considerable amount of mixing EQ and effects power here, just as a standalone unit without tethering it to a computer. Now there are a couple of issues or potential problems that I wanted to address with both interfaces. The first is that their outputs aren't precisely calibrated to help you maintain one volt per octave pitch when you send out note information. Now this can be easily fixed with something like the attenuator in the Mini Root 2, or maybe in a future VCV calibration feature. Another thing that could be interesting to test is the impact of latency on performance. In the example with the theremin, I showed you how audio goes back and forth, but that's less of something you'd notice uh, latency in compared to uh, fast envelopes or oscillators, which is what I have here, a, a stackable cable going out of the Z3000 that will be modulating a mini boot oscillator and a virtual oscillator in VCV rack. So let's check it out. In your left ear is the mini boot oscillator in your right ear, if you've got headphones, of course. The virtual oscillator, you can see on the scope if there's any latency or differences between them. The core frequency is, might be a, a bit off. I've tried to make them the same. So that may account for a bit of a difference in what you're seeing in the graphs. Let's take a look at fast envelopes. So I will hook up the same stackable cable into the output of the Mini Root 2 envelope, which is set to loop right now. Now this isn't going round trip, and again I welcome uh, proposed tests for that, but I think this is pretty fantastic. So that's pretty much it. I would really welcome any comments or ideas for better tests or better ways to see if this thing works or not. Uh, but until then, before I reach into my pocket to buy a new module, I'm definitely going to see if there's something available uh, in VCV or Softube, and that's an ever-growing list almost every single day. So I'm going to leave you with my ridiculous air theremin playing. And in conclusion, while I wouldn't call any of these audio interfaces cheap, I think it sure beats buying rows and rows of modules that you can replicate and integrate using software. Nothing will ever beat turning the knobs and plugging in cables into the real thing. But sometimes this second best ain't too shabby. If you like this video, hit like. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Hit subscribe if you want to see more and don't forget to ring the notification bell. Thanks very much for watching.